The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. It's Easter Monday of 2020 as I make this recording. I had been doing uh, verses in Genesis 1 for a little while, a number of weeks, and I want to return now for uh, just a few verses in um, Genesis 2 and Genesis 3 before moving on to something else. Uh, but I want to finish up, first of all, in Genesis 1, verses 26 and 27. This is where humanity is created. I'm not going to do as many slides as I have been doing, um, just the interlinear, but go ahead and see if you can translate uh, this line. Um, Vayomer Elohim na'ase adam uh, bazalmeka uh, kid mutenu. Actually, I, that's not, what did I say? This is um, <laughs> bizalmenu kid mutenu. The new is, is our, by the way. Okay, can you translate it? Here's my translation. So, and said, so by Yomer, the Bav is and, uh, Yomer is said, the Yod is a marker of the imperfect tense, third masculine singular, so the subject is a he grammatically. Uh, God, Elohim is the subject, uh, which is interesting, has a plural ending, but it's actually grammatically singular, as we see here. What's going on there? Um, so, and God said, this is, of course, we've seen this throughout Genesis 1 over and over again. Uh, Na'ase. So, as, as, asa is the verb to make or to do. And with the noon on the front of it, um, it is a imperfect. Although, in this particular case, again, the imperfect tense, um, it can be imperfect, in which case it's, it's, it's incomplete action. But I think it's a jussive here, a lettuce uh, word here. So the us comes from the new, and then the let us comes from the fact that it's, it's jussive. So let us make. And God said, let us make. Notice that asa is used here. Bara will use, be used in the next verse, which suggests to me that they're being used roughly synonymously um, between the two verses, because God doesn't say, let us bara humanity here. Um, but uh, John Walton has a suggestion I'll mention in a second. So let us make Adam. Now, of course, this is Adam, but I don't think that's the meaning here, because the meaning of the word Adam is human, and there's no article um, here. I just think it's saying, let us make human. Let us make humanity. It's not distinguishing gender here. It's just saying, let's make mortal. Let's make human, the, 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 the species human. Um, ba means in. Um, uh, zalam is um, image. And then nu is our, so in our image. Let us make human in our image according to our likeness. Um, so uh, uh, dama here is likeness. Synonyms, image, likeness. So God is going to create humanity uh, in his image. Well, what, what might that mean? Well, I think the context is what tells us what was originally meant. Of course, theologians for years have asked, well, what is the image of God? And the things that they've come up with haven't necessarily been wrong, but um, um, they're not most, I mean, in my opinion, exegesis reached a new level um, in the late 1800s um, because historical consciousness, I believe, uh, reached an unprecedented understanding uh, in the late, late 1800s. Um, this is my opinion. Uh, that um, there, it, there has been a qualitative difference in the last 150 years um, in how to, how to read, how to interpret the past and, and understand the past historically, that um, is, in my opinion, three-dimensional in comparison to the way history was understood prior um, to, that, to that time. Um, so anyway, we now are better, we're, we are better exegetes of the text, um, potentially, in the last hundred years than, than pretty much all the exegetes of, of the prior time. That's a, a broad and sweeping thing for me to say, but that's actually what I believe. And so what, if we want to know what the image is, we're going to have to know, uh, we're, we need to look at the context. 
Uh, and so what does the context say? And let them rule over the fish of the sea and the bird of the air. What is the image then? The image is what later uh, interpreters would call the political image. So we're not talking about the fact that humans can reason. That's not what's in view here. We're not talking about the fact that humans can tell the difference between right and wrong. That's not what's in view here. Those are all what I would call pre-modern readings of the text, readings that see theology or read theology into the text rather than leading the meaning out of the text. The juxtaposition here, I think, is quite clear, that we're talking about the image of God as the ruler. God is the king of all creation, and humanity was to be also the ruler. Um, let them rule here, uh, and uh, this is an imperfect in form, but again, I think it's adjustive. Um, so third masculine singular, uh, well, actually, the, the, the yod on the front and the shuruk on the end implies that the subject is a they, a third masculine plural. Let them, let them rule, uh, rada. Let them rule b over the dog. Um, Hebrew is a language where who is he, he is she, um, uh, and dog is fish. There's another one in there, me is who. Uh, anyway, so dog is fish. So over the fish of, patak tav is a uh, construct, so it's fish of, that's where the of, that's where the of comes from. And so of the sea. Hey, patak doubling, that's the. And over the, the bird, of, of, construct also, you can't exactly see it. Here you can see the construct clearly, but with this historically long holum, you can't uh, you just have to infer that it's construct. The parallelism is a good hint. And over the bird of Hashemayim. Uv of Hashemayim. Vyirdu big gat hayam. Uv of Hashemayim. The skies. Hey, talk doubling. It's a the skies. Okay. And over the. The, the the got scrunched um, between the bait and the bait. And so it should have been hay patak doubling, the hay got squeezed out. And so only the doubling and the patak is left. So, and uh, over b, the beast, the bahema, the behemoth, ha, big beast. Anyway, over the beast, the bahema, um, and uh, uva kol, and over all, and over all, Haaretz, the land, and Uvakol, and over every Haremesh, every creeping thing, Haromesh, that creeps. So this is a participle. Creeping thing that creeps. Participle is functioning like an adjective here, has to agree in gender, number, and definiteness. Both of these are masculine, uh, both of these are definite, both of these are singular. Okay, every creeping thing that creeps uh, on upon ha al haaretz upon the land. Okay, so there is Genesis one twenty six, Genesis one twenty seven. Um, the yivra and created God. So this is bara. Bara may have. I don't think that bara has a sense of ex nihilo creation. That would be uh, anachronistic. Nobody is thinking ex nihilo creation uh, until a long time from, from when this was written, maybe not even until the 100s AD um, was, was anybody. It just wasn't what they were thinking. It wasn't even on the multiple choice list. Um, so this may, um, John Walton suggests, have to do with um, creation of order out of chaos, which is a different, a different kind of creating than, than making uh, in general. But anyway, it does involve a kind of creation out of nothing, but it's a creation of order out of, out of disorder. That's Walton's uh, claim. So, and God made et, ha uh, et hada adam, ha adam. God made the human. God made the human bazalmo in his image. Bazelem, in the image of, this construct, Elohim, in the image of God, Bara Oto, he created them. Uh, Zakar, male, uh, Unikeva, and female, 
bara otam, he created them. So this last line here um, suggests that, well, first of all, women are also created in the image of God, but also that, that this, is, this, I think, clarifies that um, human here is not referring to a specific individual because God created the human male and female. See what I'm saying? Um, he didn't create Adam male and female. No. No, that's not what he's saying. God created human male and female. So um, very important text. Of course, um, there's been a lot of speculation as to what the us is. And of course, it's natural for Christians to think of the Trinity. And of course, that's fine. That's true, right? It's true that the Trinity was, was in on this. Um, however, Moses would not have known about the Trinity. No Old Testament person would have known about the Trinity. The Trinity was not even solidified until the 300s AD, right? And so from an original meaning standpoint, it is not, the Trinity is just not an option for what this meant originally, because there is nobody who would have had that understanding at all. You could say, well, God knew it. Yes, God did. And, and so, but, but let's say that God had put this in there um, with, with a view to the Trinity, which is possible, of course. Nobody would have interpreted that way uh, until, until after Jesus. Maybe, maybe not until after the New Testament. <laughs> maybe, maybe at the late part of the Old Testament, uh, New Testament. That's a, that's a debate. So um, what I'm getting at is this would not have been understood as a Trinitarian statement by anybody until much, 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 much later. How would they have understood it? Well, I think they would have likely understood it in terms of like Psalm 82, uh, where God stands among the other gods. Um, and so it could, could be his heavenly, uh, his heavenly court, which would include angels. Um, I don't think it's a polytheistic statement. Um, um, so the, heaven, the heavenly God side, basically, um, is my best guess uh, as to, um, to how this would have been interpreted. There are, of course, passages in the Old Testament um, that um, give hints at uh, this sense of the heavenly hosts uh, and so forth. I won't go any further with that. I just wanted to point out that, that yes, the Trinity was involved. Yes, I'm completely on board with God having winked at Jesus and said, they're not going to get this for about, you know, a thousand years. Um, but um, Moses, again, I'm not assuming mosaic authorship. I'm just using that as a, as a placeholder. Moses would not have understood this in terms of the Trinity, nor would any Israelite. Um, uh, so, okay, well, this has been Genesis 1, 26 and 27. Next week, let's go to Genesis um, 2 in some verse there.